really well what sets them apart is they don't want women to just be a part of the show. They're giving women a huge stake on this show. We, we normally have multiple matches, sometimes three and four matches on a card because they're here to say women are equals. We aren't a sideshow. We aren't just a, a ploy for ratings. We are NPWL, and that's why you will also see the Vipress Maritza Jeanette versus Maserati on our show because they're showing you their stake to claim in women's wrestling. They're showing you how much they care about women's wrestling and, and, and women in general. They're they're putting us up as equals on the card. We're main events. We're we're everything, and that's that's just amazing to be a part of. National Pro Wrestling League in Penaluma, California, June 30th. Fights and hunger. Really cool event. If you could support the cause, even if you can't go to the show, do that. This will be really cool. Taylor, I have my list of questions, but in something you said, I'm going to veer a little bit on it. Has women's wrestling changed in any way since you started about 10, 11, 12 years ago? God, I, it makes me feel so old. It's going on almost, uh, this October will make 12 years since I, I started wrestling and 10 years since I made my official debut, uh, 9 or 10 years, and it really has changed. It, it really has. There wasn't as many opportunities when I started. You were a valet at the beginning, no? Yes, I was. I was a valet, and I was the only girl consistently going to training at that time, and I was the newest girl during that time as well. Um, everybody else in the immediate scene, uh, by the time I came on, had already been wrestling three years or more, and then, of course, you had veterans like Nikki Rocks, who were just, no pun intended, they were rocking the independent scene, literally setting a standard for women's wrestling, and they really put, I feel, wrestling on the map for girls like me, and I, I feel they don't get enough credit. You know, Awesome Kong and, and Nikki Rocks and women like that, you know, Gail Kim, they, they really paved the way for women like me. And if it wasn't for women like Nikki James and Lisa Marie Varen, I, I probably wouldn't be the woman I am today or be in the position that I am today because they saw value in me. They took a chance with me. And I really hope that I am able to do them proud and, and pay them back in the way that, you know, they didn't have to help me. They didn't have to talk to me, but they did. And, and it wasn't for, you know, for their benefit necessarily. So that's really cool to be in a position like that, you know. But when I first started, there wasn't as many opportunities as there are now. There wasn't, you know, multiple girls matches on a card most of the time. And if you weren't friends with women who were already in it, then you really didn't get as many opportunities, you know. You you didn't get it discovered as fast, you know. And now it's like you, you look at women's wrestling and it's everywhere. It's being highlighted. It's amazing. It's really cool to see this. this it's interesting because you're a very good worker and you're beautiful and you had to start as a valet. So was that frustrating that you had to start as a valet or you just took it like, hey, I got to develop, so let me do this to get to here? Uh, that laying never bothered me. It still got me on the show and I didn't mind doing ring crew because it got me on the show. I didn't mind selling other people's merchandise because it got me on the show. You know, I was always a big fan of paying dues because in my mind, growing up with my mom, she was very, very strict. And so if I ever wanted anything, I had to work for it. So I was never afraid of hard work. And to me, I never looked down on valets because I thought they added something to the show. They weren't just, you know, a side segment or a laughable thing. You were part of the show. So that never bothered me because it always gave me room to grow. It always gave me something to aspire to and be better for. And then once, you know, uh, opportunities came up, I was ready for them. So I, I never looked down my nose at uh, being a valet. I still valet even today uh, with my husband. So, you know, <laughs> I, I don't think that anybody is necessarily above, above anything. And you know what, I didn't mean it so much that to just make a knock on a valet, but I just didn't know how much you wanted to wrestle, and instead of wrestling, you had to be a valet. Oh, no, 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 believe me, I didn't take it like that. Um, you know, some people, they do get frustrated by doing things like that, but for me personally, I never did, because I was just always thankful, because in my mind, there was always somebody else that could have been in that spot. You know, a lot of people say things about me, whether positive or negative, and over the last few years, there's been a lot of negative, but I've always known who I was, and I've always been thankful for every opportunity I've received, whether good or bad, because I always learned something from it. It may have taken several years, and then I go, ah, so that's what I was supposed to learn from that. But no matter how long it ever took me, I always learned, and I always grew from it, and I feel like that that did always keep me humble. And I feel like a lot of people that have judged me, you know, up to even today that judge me and say things, whether good or bad, they never really took the real time to 
valet. I worked hard to get even just that valet spot, and I always knew that that could be somebody else. So instead of being someone who was replaceable, I would focus on every opportunity, what can I do to be irreplaceable? And, and that's what I did. And I never really thought of it as a knock. I always just thought, well, this is the opportunity I have today. What am I going to do today to get an even better opportunity tomorrow? And it's worked out for you. Thank you. In your development as a wrestler, how important was Ohio Valley Wrestling to you? Ohio Valley Wrestling was a very huge thing for me. Um, I left a negative place to go there to learn, and I feel like they really set me apart. I know a lot of people you know, don't want to go there because they don't want to pay or they don't want to do this, they don't want to do that. Me, I, I got there as soon as I could, and believe me, it wasn't as soon as I had wanted, but I learned so much from there, and anybody that really takes that training seriously understands the value that it adds to you, and there's a lot of things that you learn there that you don't learn in a lot of other places, unless those trainers have actually been at Ohio Valley Wrestling and gone through and stuck through with that training. And that training prepared me for my live debut on Impact Wrestling. You know, I didn't get to practice a bunch of stuff beforehand for that. I didn't know what I was doing until several hours after I got there. You know, so that training that I got at Ohio Valley Wrestling, they taught me what it meant to be on camera. They taught me what it meant to be a character. They taught me what it meant to wrestle like your character. They taught me what it meant to make other people look good in the ring, to tell a story, the psychology, the the being a star essentially and that type of training isn't where you get a lot of other places and so I'm really excited for when MPWL has their own training facility because they come from an entertainment background and they'll be able to have the tools to teach that kind of stuff that I learned in Kentucky in California and I think that's going to be an amazing irreplaceable tool and that was really fundamental honestly to my career you know I used that stuff at every major company I've ever gone to I used the tools from Ohio Valley Wrestling who do you credit for training you I don't have any one particular trainer um, no no one trainer has ever stuck with me my entire career um, so I'm gonna have to say uh, MPWL just because over the last three years they've stuck by me they've helped me grow both professionally and personally and I really credit them with the revival of my career and helping me give back to my fan base were you a pro wrestling fan growing up yes I was I like to tell this a lot I was actually not allowed to watch wrestling growing up my mother grew up on old old wrestling like in the 1970s and um, when Lincoln Park was really big people like Andre the Giant Chief J Strongbow Paul Orndorff and said they would they would be there and so when she saw the wrestling going on in the 90s she was like oh heck no is my daughter gonna watch that and I I remember coming home from elementary school one day and I gave my mom the DX thing <laughs> Not knowing what it was from, and I got grounded for like almost a month. It was hilarious. You gave you <laughs> DX chopped you DX chopped your mom. Yes, I did. Not knowing what it was, I just saw everybody in, in elementary school doing it. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go home and show my mom what I learned today. <laughs> So much, so much for the arithmetic, the reading, the science. Here's what I learned today, Mom. Yeah, it was really funny. Um, but yeah, so I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling growing up, and I, I just remember, oh, why can't I watch it? I want to watch this. And when one of my cousins, who's uh, still to this day follows my career, and he's a big wrestling fan, when he would babysit me, he would sneak it and let me watch it, and I just fell in love with it. And I remember, um, I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, one of my girlfriends. Her name is Amanda. I grew up with her playing sports with her and when I when I uh, when I flipped over her house she would show me wrestling tapes that she had taped from TV this is dating me of course because you know a lot of people don't remember VHS tapes <laughs> but we would watch her VHS tapes and I'd be like oh my gosh Victoria is so cool oh my gosh look at your stratus look at China what what is going on it's, it's so amazing and when I finally got a TV in my bedroom I remember the debut of Chris Jericho so that was kind of like it. I, that's when I knew I wanted to be a star in, in professional wrestling. You know, it was it was the culmination of everything I ever wanted for my life. I I wanted to be an actress, so the being a character in professional wrestling really stood out to me. I was always a varsity athlete growing up, so the athleticism 
um, in professional wrestling. It really spoke to me. And I used to teach public speaking, and I was on the debate team, and I loved, you know, performing in front of people. So cutting promos and wrestling and being in front of live crowds and all the travel, it was really appealed to me. So as a child, for me, it's everything I want. And <laughs> so after that, you know, my mom didn't really have a choice. And... Uh, if you don't mind, I want to give a little plug to um, another woman who I admire and love so much, uh, my friend Samantha Johnson. She is also from New Bedford. We, we grew up together in junior high and high school and have followed each other's careers since then. Um, she was huge in supporting me. She was one of the few people that, uh, once I got to high school, that thought wrestling was cool. Because, I don't know, for whatever reason, once, you, once we got to high school, there was, like, no one that liked pro wrestling. So Sam and I would always watch wrestling together, talk wrestling together, talk about the pay-per-view. She made it cool again. And I was really excited to have that support, especially knowing that this was something that I wanted to do with my career. And she always supported me with that. So I want to give her a little shout-out for all of her support. She's been on America's Got Talent, and now she is, um, you can vote for her on the Floor app for the Fox Floor. And I really want her to have just as much success in her professional career as mine, because without people like her and Amanda and my friend Lexi, I wouldn't be the woman I am today, because I felt that women's support really made an impact in my career and helped push me forward through those hard times, because without that support, who would we all be, you know? That's cool. And it's a fun story. <laughs> it, it's interesting in this regard. Lexi, Samantha, Amanda, your cousin, and your mom. Yeah. Did they get to see you wrestle? Have they gone live to see you wrestle? A couple of them have. Um, my friend Lexi, Alexa, she was actually the reason why I got my first tickets to see my first live event, actually. Where was that? I won tickets because of her, so I got to see SmackDown Live, and that was my first actual wrestling show that I got to go to. And what's really funny is they were handing out flyers after the show, and I ended up going to that wrestling school like almost 10 years later. So it, it's really funny how uh, how life works and how the, the support that you have that you don't realize you have while it's happening affects you years later. And I've actually never given those women a shout out until today, so that's, a, that's an exclusive for your interview. Um, I just, I just realized how important support is because you can do something yourself, but you never truly get anywhere on your own. And being with NPWL has really, really made me realize how much support I had that I didn't realize how important it was. And you really got to give back and say thank you for that. So. Where was that SmackDown Live show? Or SmackDown show, I should say. Rhode Island. It was in Rhode Island? <laughs> yep. Do, would you remember the name of the arena there or no? Performing Arts Center, but I'm not positive. I was just so stoked to be there that I was like, oh, this is going to be a wicked good time. So I was just so excited to just even be there. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. That is so cool. So what does mom think of your wrestling now? I think she is uh, proud of me in the sense that most people never thought I would do anything. You know, they nobody ever thought I would make it. They always thought, oh, this is some short, sort of, you know, childhood fanaticism. It's just something that she likes. It's a phase, a fad. She'll grow out of it. And I think what my mother is super proud of is the fact that I had the guts and the gumption to actually go out and do it. It didn't matter how many times I fell on my face. It didn't matter what people said about me. It didn't matter how many times I failed. I kept going back at it. And every failure I had was an inadvertent success because I found a different way to go about things. I found a different way to succeed. And she's really proud that I fulfilled my dreams, maybe not in the way or the, to the extent that I dreamed of them when I was a young child, but I still did it. I, I've still done almost everything I've ever wanted to do for my life in, in one fathom or another. And I think she's really proud of that. She doesn't necessarily like what I do, but she supports what I do and how far I've gone to do it, including all the sacrifices I've made, you know, all the things I've missed because 